Hello and welcome to Valencia. It is the day before the marathon here in Valencia. I've just been out for my shakeout run in the amazing uh, garden, the Churia, the old riverbed that runs through the centre of the city. Uh, been there running there the last couple of days. Saw a load of elites there yesterday, I think. Jill and I are both out here to run the marathon, so I'll try and catch up with her before and after the race as well. But thought I'd quickly run through what I'm planning to test tomorrow and the plan for the race. So it's an interesting race. It's probably the first marathon in the wild where I don't really have much of a plan uh, or idea of what I can do. Like since London and Berlin, I've had a bit of downtime, uh, just you know, relaxing off the marathons. Then I got COVID and I fell over. Um, and I think I've come back into some kind of shape the last couple of weeks. So I'm going to go out, run hard, probably set off not far off 2.30 pace and see how long it takes before I blow up. Um, but yeah, no expectations, very relaxed going into this one compared to Berlin because I feel very happy of what I've run this year in the marathon and it'll just be a bit of fun to go and run a nice hard marathon and see what turns up and test some gear, which is always exciting. On that note, I'm gonna be testing the Alpha Fly 2 tomorrow. I think it's a really interesting shoe. It probably wouldn't be my absolute top choice, which is why this is a really good chance to test it, I think, because I'm gonna run hard. I think I can run a decent time, but I don't think I'm in PB shape, but I should get a really good testing of the shoe and I think it's probably slightly underrated in a lot of people's minds maybe even mine included because it is that bit big and heavy but maybe in a marathon every time I've run long in it or run short in it it's always really impressed me and I think it could be the perfect shoe for tomorrow really help me power through what is a very fast last bit of the race so if you end up fresh in Valencia towards the end of the race it can be very quick so hopefully they'll keep me fresh despite the fact I don't know if I can run as fast as I <laughs> am going to try and do so obviously you can see I've got the stride pod on there so I've had this about a week and I've been calibrating it with the Alpha Fly, I think it's pretty much bang on now in terms of distance, used it at the track. So hoping to see that be really accurate tomorrow, running uh, you know, from kilometer to kilometer. I'll do manual laps and just see how accurate it is in each kilometer. Be you also using the Garmin Epics on my other wrist, <laughs> my favorite watch, the most accurate watch I think out there. So we'll put that to the test as well. And I'll be using the stride with the Apple Watch Ultra that obviously won't be testing anything really on the Apple Watch Ultra. It'll just be a display for the pretty excellent stride app actually. It's a really good app. So it'll be interesting to see how accurate the stride is. It always used to be really accurate for me on distance, but then when I started reviewing shoes and changing shoes every day, actually it really struggled a bit with that. But over the last week, I haven't noticed that that much. I've used this, I've used the stride with the Alpha Fly, the Velocity Nitro while I'm here, the Puma Fast Track Nitro on trails and off road. And actually, once calibrated at the track, it seems to be pretty accurate across those shoes. I'm just not sure it's really that much more accurate than dual band GPS on the Epics in most conditions, but in a city marathon, that's where it might really come into play. I'm not going to use the power to judge the race tomorrow because I'm still calibrating my zones with the with the um, stride pods. I'm not really there yet, I don't think. But yeah, they're the main things I'm gonna be testing. It's the Alpha Fly and the stride pod. Two watches as always, <laughs> Epic Snap Watch Ultra, but I've run two marathons with them already this year. I have a pretty good idea of what they can do and they're both very impressive. So nothing too much to learn there, I don't think. Gear wise, I'll have my decathlon women's shorts on again with the great storage and I'll be using my usual nutrition plan. So this time after the race, I'll try and do a bit more of a detailed uh, look at my nutrition plan because a lot of people asked about it after Berlin. Anyway, I'm gonna go now to a cafe and relax uh, the day before the race, try and catch up with Jill tomorrow in the morning before the race, we're in the same start block, but I might not have my phone, but either way, we'll chat to Jill after the race and see how she's got on. Hello from Hello. Valencia. Both run a marathon today. Didn't run together this time, um, but it was still very nice. Jill. Jill is not very happy, but ran unbelievable time. Anyway, but yeah, but it's not unbelievable for Jill. That's the problem. 2.55.11. <laughs> yeah, I ran better at the start of the year, and my training's been amazing, and I have no excuse. Uh, but I couldn't move my legs any faster, I think. I think my head said I couldn't. I don't know. I don't know. Still. So there we go. Anyway. Brilliant time. I also didn't PB today, but I came in a bit more chilled than Jill. I, this is yeah. not my PB race <laughs> after Berlin, so I was just trying to trying to go sub 30 well, and I did. Had COVID and knackered your ribs up. Yeah, shouldn't have fallen over, that's the problem. But um, I think I yeah, had a lot of fitness left over from London and I ran 2.29, 26 odd. So my second first marathon, very pleased. Lovely course, awful start. Valencia yeah. Marathon this year, they've really got, yeah, no signs, no idea what to drop my bag, no toilets. That was a bit of a shame. And the toilets, when I did find them, um, had no light in them and it was dark, so you couldn't see what you were doing, which in Portuguese is only going to end in No, that's not good. Right, testing. Like, I've done a little video saying what I'm testing, but Jill, we you haven't, you haven't, don't know what you're testing. Until, until right now. So what's the big things you're testing um, today? So I am in Vaporfly 2s, which isn't a very exciting thing to test. Um, I've got the Tracksmith um, Alston top, which is all I wore, as in like a crop. 
Um, no chasing and really good, like no, the pins don't come through. Uh, I've got the on running um, sprint shorts, uh, which had uh, all my gels and also um, on Nick's recommendation, I had my Kalimji soft flask, soft flask. Uh, with Morton <laughs> drink in it and um, that sat really nicely in the side pockets, no bouncing or anything like that and you could get it in and out without too much hassle, so that's really good. Um, yeah, I was using like uh, Morton and Morton Caf for the first time, normally I use high five. Um, and they weren't too aggressive, which is good. In the past, I found them quite, um, yeah. quite harsh, but um, I think I've managed to train my um, <coughs> train my stomach to that. And that was um, the guys at Precision Fuel actually um, yeah. kind of talked me through the fueling and stuff, and were trying to persuade me to get from um, between the like 60 to 90 milligrams per hour kind of mark. Nice. So I've been trying to kind of get closer and closer to that. So that was kind of the main thing I was testing was the fueling level this time. <coughs> Um, and I think, oh, and the Garmin 255. Yeah, how was the pacing on that? Any good? Um, it was it was a little bit ahead on GPS, or yeah. quite a lot ahead. Um, but I kind of expected that, and I think you like, well, I don't know, Valencia ought to be quite good because it's quite open, I yeah. suppose. Um, but I looked at last time I ran Valencia, and I think I ran 26.3 then. Um, so it'd be interesting to see what that comes out at this time, what distance. Okay, yeah, I'll um, we'll have a look at that in a second. You have a look while I tell mine, because I had two watches on. <laughs> So the Garmin Epix uh, got ahead quite early, but then was actually pretty good around 42, 47, um, which is, you know, and it was quite reliable. Once I reset it at a marker, I could, you know, it was ahead every lap. Now the stride pod, which I had calibrated, didn't have a very good day. It's I had 42.84 in total from the stride. And interestingly, it changed with my pace. So early on, I was running fairly relaxed, kind of high 330s. And it was more or less bang on it. I was doing, I've done all the manual case. I'll have them on screen showing you every how far it was <laughs> But generally it was like 1.01. .01. You know, so it was going to add up to around 40, same as the Garmin, but when I sped up a bit, it started getting a bit more out. Each K was like 1.0, you know, it does add up to uh, not the not the most good. And, um, but, you know, it was okay for pacing each individual K. Towards the end, I did have to like look at the individual K and add a bit, a few seconds on, because I knew it was going a bit quick. But it's hard to do that, because it was calibrated correctly for the first half of the race, essentially, and then wasn't calibrated so well. So, so yeah, I need to fill all the calibration again and try again. But I basically think, at this point, the dual band GPS watches there's no need to use a footboard for accuracy on day light. Use the stride for power, by all means. I'm going to look into that in the future. But if you're using it for distance accuracy, multi-band GPS is now as good and reliable and can also change on the run. So you can have a little hold for a while, Jill, my, my hands are shaking. Um, so the thing is, if the stride is wrong, it's going to be wrong. It's just calibrated that distance. It's going to measure that distance. It's not going to correct. Whereas Garmin can be wrong during a kilometre than correct with GPS. So. Um, I would say you know, it's another good day out for the Epics, basically. And actually, the Apple Watch Ultra I was using for the stride normally would be amazing on GPS. I probably would just use it without the pod, if I'm honest. But we'll do more tests on power for the full review because that's when stride can really you know, be very useful. If you are into power, I've just never used it for that. Anyway, what did you get on your watch? Uh, I got 42.5. I'm rested now, don't worry. <laughs> You're all right. 42.5, <laughs> so yeah, pretty good. Multi-band GPS yeah, on that as well. So. Not bad. I have, I'm too nervous to kind of manually lap um, because I'm just worried about like messing things up. So I need to get my head around that. I did most to open another app on the Apple Watch trying to manually that once. That was quite annoying. Yeah. Uh, my test today to do those shoes was the Outfly 2, which I'm honest were really, really good. And um, I don't I don't know, these aren't a shoe that promote a lot of affection because they're incredibly <laughs> ugly and they're very big and they're very expensive. And yeah, they're even heavier than the original Outfly and you kind of just think, well, they're a bit heavier, you know, maybe I should it's one of those shoes when you use them you go, eh, yeah, yeah, they are really, really good. Yeah, like uh, I so the last six K of the race, I got to there and I'd kind of I ran through, went through halfway around 115.10 and I was on for 2.30 pace, you know, by around 36k and I thought, okay, I don't know if I'm going to run this now, I feel really tired. <laughs> um, so I'll probably run a nice 2.31, so I'd be really happy with that. And then I just thought, I kept falling through kilometres, it felt like, uh, just on pace. And the shoes were just, weren't heavy at all, didn't get annoyingly big, weren't bulky, weren't in the way. So, yeah, Alpha 2, it turns out they are really good. Um, yeah, just fell through some <laughs> cases, yeah. Fine. Just kept like lap, manually lapping and going, oh, that's another one on pace. Yeah. I'm still on pace, that's another one on pace. Not like Little Miss uh, 32K. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so that's actually very different. So in Berlin, I ran the last few K today quicker than I ran in Berlin. Wow. Yeah, so, and that was always my suspicion of the Vapefly is the Vapefly is amazing. And when you're tiring, you can keep picking your feet up, yeah. but you're going to. I tire quick earlier in a marathon in that shoe compared to in the Alpha Fly, which just gives me that bit more comfort okay. and protection. So I'll probably be back in Alpha Flies or some subscription over yeah, the next year. 
<laughs> Other than that, I don't think I tested too much. I had my panda socks on, I had my club vest, decathlon shorts, and my Morton fueling strategy. I'll do, I'll go back to the hotel at some point and do two quick minutes on my fueling strategy because people ask about it quite a lot. But I will say this as a quick note, I always forget to say this. I carry three bottles with me. It's fine for me because I have a very shuffly stride, and I think that reduces the amount of bounce I get. If you're a very elegant flowing runner, if you look like Irish McColgan uh, or anyone like that, maybe you'll get more bounce from the drink. So maybe it won't work, but I do know it works for me. Anyway, uh, I think that's probably enough here now. Um, can I give one shout out to the man who um, gave me back my gel when I dropped my very first gel in the Wow, race. what a legend. At a switchback, grabbed it and came out and ran and gave it to me. Well, uh, what a legend. Yeah, and so, anyone who said hello, it was very nice. I saw an unbelievable amount of London club vests. Yes, and I've been chatting right. to quite a few of the guys, but it was great. Uh, last show of the medal, which is really nice. Yeah. Uh, Valencia, you're an amazing course, really good marathon. Do sort out your start. Other yes. than that, I. I Tell your marshals where things are. <laughs> and I do think the finish here is about as quick as a marathon gets. If you can get, yeah, the uh, last UK. Anyway, I've got to go find a. got to go carry a three year old around on my shoulders. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I want to do this quick section just on my nutrition strategy because I talked about it. I used it in Berlin and I've used it again at Valencia and people had a few questions so I thought I'd try and sum it up quickly here because it's been very successful for me. The crux of it is basically that you carry your own drinks, the Morton 320 drinks mix in soft flasks as you run which some people won't like but uh, it works very well for me. So basically in the morning, uh, the night before sometimes I have a Morton but generally I prefer to have a big bag of crisps uh, as my last bit of carb loading. So I had crisps ahead of Valencia and in, but in Berlin I did have a Morton drink the night before but I don't think that's strictly necessary. In the morning uh, for breakfast I will have you know, some bread and butter, pretty plain stuff and a coffee and a pure precision hydration 1500 uh, electrolyte tab. I mean, any electrolyte tab will really do, it's a really high sodium one that I kind of kick off the day with. But at the same time, I've started to also have uh, a Morton drink then as well. So a full 500 mils of 320 drink mix, that's 80 grams of carbs. Now I used to have that in like the hour, half an hour before the race, but for both, both Valencia and Berlin, I had it a lot earlier in the day, so about two hours before the race, and I found it actually worked much better. I really felt very steady and settled going into the race that way. So that's first thing I'd recommend is yeah, have your big pre-race drink a fair bit before the race. That's what I like to do now. And then in the race, I basically aim to have 20 grams of carbs every 5K, and that's broken up into so three soft flasks that are 250 mils of the 320 drink mix in each of them. So you make up one 500 ml bottle and divide it into the soft flasks. So they're each 40 grams of carbs. And I also carry two Morton gels. I have one of the normal ones and one of the caffeine ones. I will say both Berlin and Valencia, I didn't end up using the normal one. So actually ignore that, just take one gel with you. I use a caffeine one, but you can have a normal one. And I aim to have the gel as one of my first carb top up. So ideally at 5K, get the caffeine in, get the first gel in, uh, that's what I did in Berlin. In Valencia, I had it at 10K just because there was a water, a water station there and I like to have the gel with water. So at five or 10K, I'll have the gel. And then basically, yeah, like I say, every 5K, I have half of one of these soft flasks. So five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and 35 you know, including the gel at the start. And then you could have another gel at 40, but I don't think it's really necessary. At that point, you kind of know what's gonna happen, I think. Um, and the other thing I tend to do with the soft flask is, so I have three of them in my running shorts, two at the back, one on the front. These are the decathlon shorts. I'll put a link in the caption, but I think they're sold out, to be honest. I tend to have half a bottle of each in turn to kind of balance at the, the load as they lower. So I start with one at the back, and then the other one at the back, then one at the front. Uh, and what I do tend to do is take more of them in, probably in that first drink from each bottle. So I'll probably have more than half the bottle the first time I drink from it, because I think you process carbs a bit better earlier in the race when you're not working so hard, and then leave about you know 40% of it for your second drink, something like that. So yeah, gel at five, and then half a bottle at 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Bob's your uncle, hopefully run through to the end really well. Like I say, I don't get much bouncing with the bottles with my shorts. I think it's partly because I shuffle, but also the shorts are very good and they hold the bottles really tight against you. Uh, and I don't really, be, I'm not at all bothered by the weight at this stage. So that's my plan. I felt really good fueling wise at both Berlin and Valencia. I think I really nailed that at both of those races. It's just a strategy I'm gonna use from now on. Yeah, I thought I'd sum it up quickly here.